Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I wish everybody a happy and healthy New Year. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our new class on leverage order entries and stop losses. Three very, very important concepts and components that you need to understand and know how to use to trade successfully. Sometimes trading is more about understanding the techniques of trading, how to properly enter an order, and there are many orders you can use to become a whole strategy and how to properly protect yourself against risk. So remember, ETX is a regulated provider. So therefore, I need to give you a risk warning. Trading in the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk or seek independent advice if necessary. ETX Capital provides an execution only service and is therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation or construed advice. All traders must understand that there's a high element of randomness to the markets. Therefore, they will experience both winning and losing trades while following the same trading strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. And for those of you who don't know much about ETX, we are a fast growing financial services company and we are physically based in London. You can come by our offices if you wish. We are authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA. And our parent company, Monocore London, is a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with us, you have many different choices. You can start out on the ETX binary options platform and binary options have been adapted and accepted by the FCA starting this month. So they are now a regulated product. And the thing about binary options, they're a great way to enter the markets because there's no leverage or margin. So whatever dollar amount you type into the screen is the only risk you're taking. And you're simply predicting whether an asset will move up or down. That's all that you care about. It's the direction it moves. Because with binary options, it's a great way to enter the market, figure out how assets move, how they interrelate, how news affects an asset, how economic events affect, how you can start using technical analysis where your risk is fairly low. Okay. Then when you're ready to move on to higher risk and more advanced trading, you can use our ETX Pro platform. And that's our internet-based platform where you simply log in. We're going to be using that tonight a little bit. And if you're ready for the more advanced trading, you can download our ETX MT4 platform where you can add on financial experts or expert advisors. And you have the most advanced charts and you can use it to build an automated trading system for yourself. But you can use one of them, all of them, whichever you would prefer. Just simply contact customer support and they'll get you passwords and get you all on the right platforms or whichever you want to have. Now, tonight we're going to be doing most of the stuff also on the new ETX Trader Pro platform. If you've been trading with us for a while and you haven't tried out our new Trader Pro, Trader Pro platform, just click on the tab when you log in and go to new platform. And if you don't like it, which... Not everybody, it, it's a great platform, but some people are used to, like me, I'm an old guy. I don't like change. So you can just click on the top tab and go back to the old platform, but it's a great trading platform. Now tonight's class is being recorded and you can access that recording by using the same link you used to come to tonight's class in about 24 hours from now. Now there are three concepts that every trader needs to master, leverage, order entry and stop losses. So let's start with leverage. Okay. Leverage is what ramps up your potential profit and at the same time ramps up your possible or increased risk. Now leverage is a two, it's got two names that we use. We use margin and leverage. Leverage is the amount you're ramping up your trading, the multiplier. Margin is the amount of the deposit and it is a deposit, it's not a payment. It is simply a hold or a deposit on that trade based on how large the trade is and the margin requirement for that particular trade. So leverage is the amount of times. 
100 to 1 leverage is 100 times whatever you are trading. And the margin is attached to it. Now, margin and leverage are offered in just about every market. And Warren Buffett pointed out a very important concept to all of us not so long ago, saying that margin is quite a great tool, but it can also be addictive. So you don't always need to purchase or trade with margin because it is addictive. When leverage works, it's mag it magnifies your gains. Your spouse might think you're very clever and your neighbors might get envious, but leverage is addictive. Once having profited from its wonders, very few people retreat to more conservative practices. And as we all learn in third grade and some relearn in 2008, any series of positive numbers, however impressive the numbers may be, evaporates when multiplied by a single zero. History tells us that leverage all too often produces zeros. Now you have to remember when you're trading with leverage, you need to not just say, well, I got $1,000 in my account, so I'm gonna magnify it and use all that money and take all that exposure because you're ramping up risk, okay? And you could, you don't want to wipe out your account in a, in, a, in a matter of seconds. So it's very important that you don't get addicted to making these ridiculously high trades. Okay. So what exactly is leverage? Well, unlike traditional dealing, CFD and financial spread trading allows you to trade the markets by paying a small fraction of the total value of the trade you are exercising or executing. So your margin is just a small little piece of the pie. So leverage is a facility that enables you to gain large exposure to the financial markets while only trying to tying up a relative small amount of your capital. It is a key feature in CFD trading. When you invest in a leveraged product, the provider will ask you to put up a sum representing just a fraction of the total value of your position. Effectively, the provider is lending you the balance. It's not a loan, it's not, you're not signing loan documents, but it's technically or essentially a loan. Your profit and loss is based on the full position, however. So the amount you gain or lose might seem very high in relationship to the sum you've invested. So a lot of times you'll see the example where you invested $1,000, you tied up $100,000 of an asset, you got a very nice return and your return was $1,000. Okay. So what they're saying is the example will be is that you made a 1,000% profit. Yes, you risked a 1,000, you didn't risk, you had capital of $1,000 and you made profit of $1,000, so you made 100% of your investment, but you technically risked, and you were at risk for that entire value of that entire trade. And understanding how risk is, and how risk is tied into there is quite important. Somebody just write in and said, there's no sound. Can you, you all let me know if you're hearing me all right? Because everything shows all my sound is going on. So if so, somebody can locate in where you can write in question. Good, thank you very much. So it's, let me just write to this guy and tell him it's his own computer. And we'll solve this problem because he can't hear me talking to you. Thank you, guys. Okay, sorry about that. So in a conventional setting, and you were to buy 100,000 shares of an asset at 260p, that total trade or that total investment would have been 26,000 pounds. And that's what you pay your broker, 26,000 pounds. So if you wanted to buy shares in HSBC and they were trading at 260, you would need to put up or pay for those shares with 260 pounds, 26,000 pounds. 
and you would have had to have 26,000 pounds in your trading account if there was no leverage. But in CFD and financial spread betting, you only have to put up a small margin amount. So basically for those same 10,000 shares, which are still at 260p, you'd only have to put up a 15% margin and therefore you'd only need to have 3,900 pounds in your account to tie up those same 10,000 shares. That means that if those shares moved up in value and then you closed your position, both of you would suffer or, or not witness the same profit. If those shares moved up and you closed out and you sold the shares you had, or you closed out your margin account, the difference is you only put up a small amount of capital, but you still have the same risk. But it allows you to enter the market with a lot larger market share. So let's go through it step by step, and then we're going to get off of leverage and go on to other stuff. A 10% margin means that just $100 could get the same exposure as a $1,000 investment. This represents a 10 to 1 margin. It's a multiplier times 10. So let's say you want to buy 1,000 shares of XYZ. At the current price is $1, it would cost you $1,000. If the share price goes up 20, 20 cents per share, you can sell out your position at $1,000 at 120 or $1,020 and make $200 or 20% profit. However, some providers will offer you a chance to buy XYZ shares using leverage. All you want to do is you put a small down portion as a margin, a percentage of the full value of the $10,000, and you will retain the full exposure. So let's say your initial margin requirement is 10%. Say you would pay 10% times $1 per share times 1,000 shares, or it would only require you $1,000. $100. So when you bought them, it required 1000 Now it only requires you to 100 And if the share price rose from the $1 to the $120, you would still make the same $200 profit as if you bought the shares outright. Now, you made the same profit in both cases, but using leverage, you would only put down $100 as the margin instead of the full 1000 So your return on your investment is 100% as opposed to 20% if you had to purchase the asset directly. So it allows you to get a much bigger market share, but your profit and loss would be exactly the same as if you had put the entire amount down. So remember, your profit will be just as high and your exposure and your risk will be just as high. Your initial outlay is referred to as margin or deposit requirement. Your provider will request this to cover or part cover any potential losses you may cover incur. The margin is always a fraction of what it would cost you to buy the asset directly. Some products require margins as a fixed amount per contract, while others are calculated as a percentage of the value of the position. Margin rates and slippage factors can vary depending on regulatory rules, and you've seen that in a lot of headlines lately with the FCA and uh, the European regulators cutting back margin at some point we were seeing up to 500 to one margin, 400 to one, 200 to one, and most of the major exchanges have cut it back and we'll see 100 to one, 50 to one, 25 to one, okay? Because too many people were getting into too big of a exposure. So using leverage is a key advantage of CFD and Forex trading, but needs to be fully understood to avoid potential pitfalls. To illustrate this, Let's go back to the C, the HSBC. We're not going to go back there again because we've. I think you all pretty well grasped with the other examples we've had. So we don't need to go step by step because we're 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 cutting down on time. But I'm going to take you over real quickly to the ETX Trader Tro Live platform and show you exactly where you would see the margin requirement on a trade. So let me pop this up here. Now, we're looking at, when it pops up on your screen, the live ETX Pro platform. So when you open up a ticket to a trade, you're going to see right down here 
when you set the size of your trade, Uh, or, you know, or how much in this case, it's, we're looking at Bitcoin Euro. So this is how much of a Bitcoin and in the, in, in the currency that my account is set in. And we can see to, to currently, let's go to one whole Bitcoin. One, I don't know where Bitcoin's trading day. I think Bitcoin's about 12,300 now. But if we were to wanted to buy or trade, whether a seller, whether we're shorting or buying a Bitcoin, it would require us to put down 624 pounds to tie up one Bitcoin, which is currently trading at 12,365 euros. So we would have to understand it. Let me get the Bitcoin chart up here also. I don't. Okay, that's better. Now we're looking at Bitcoin. Okay, so this is where you would set your, your you would see your margin set. Now, there are different margin requirements based on the asset you are looking at. If you wish to see each margin requirement and what the, the percentage of margin is on each and every asset you would have to contact customer service and they would give you a, a a link to go see every asset and see what the margin is because the margins do change remember it's only a deposit no and they do change slightly on risk and a lot of times you see when we're going like into the brexit vote um the the brokers change the or increase the leverage. It's not done it could cost you any more money. It's the capital you have to have because when the markets get very volatile, they want to cover or make sure you've got enough margin to cover that swing in the market because we don't, you know, they don't want you just going hog wild crazy and getting hurt. And that's not that's not the idea. So you can always see the the leverage and the margin. And what you would do is you could adjust the size of your trade. Say, for instance, you didn't have 600 pounds in your account and you only had 300 pounds in your account. You could effectively change the size of your trade to cover the margin required. Okay. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. And... So as we see, you can see it again here. As you can see on here, we can see the margin right here in the center. So here for Bitcoin, the margin would be 58 pounds for each one tenth of a contract. And this is when Bitcoin was trading at, at 11,396 when I took the screenshot a while back. And because with CFD trading, the leverage is built in. And that's one of the things you have to know about CFD trading. It, it is designed to have the leverage in there. So you can't increase and decrease your leverage. So you increase and decrease the size of your position. Now, as you notice, when we're looking at the margin leverage on the ticket, we also saw orders and trades. And as well as understanding leverage okay, and margin, which is really pretty simple, you have to understand the different type of orders. Unfortunately, most traders don't. And they order what we call, they enter the buy or the sell market order. That means that whatever price is shown on the screen, you click and it makes an immediate trade and, put, and, and executes that trade and gives it to you at the current market price, whether you're buying or selling. Well, this is not a very smart way to trade just isn't because this is just a simple order entry why would you want to buy or sell something at the current market value because it could have pipped up a couple, a couple pips in the last few minutes it could have pipped down in a couple bit why not control your trade and tell the system the price you're willing to pay 
And that takes us to a limit order where you say, I want to buy Bitcoin, but I'm only going to buy Bitcoin at this particular price. And the minute Bitcoin hits that price, initiate my trade. Or I'm going to sell Bitcoin when Bitcoin reaches 15,000, sell a Bitcoin for me, execute a trade. That makes a lot more sense than randomly executing a trade. I mean, it's like going to a car dealer and paying the sticker price on the window and not asking the guy if he'll give you a discount or throw in some free car washers or something. So an order is simply, and if you think about this, is simply an instruction to open or close a trade. Now, we have great big modern computers running all of this stuff with great big servers and all kinds of uh, development. The computers can do whatever you tell them to do, whatever you instruct them to do. Now, there are a number of different types of orders that you can place, depending on whether you want to trade immediately or wait for a certain price. So let's review some of the most basic types of orders. There are different orders you can place depending on whether you want to trade immediately or wait. The main type of order you're likely to use are stops and limits. Those are also very basic orders. My favorite order is OCOs, open, one closes the other. You have trailing stops. You have lots of types of orders and types of things you could do. And to be honest with you, you can trade using OCOs up and down, up and down all day to trade a bounce in the market and not even use a strategy. You know, you can just tell the system, you can figure out where the support level is. And every time it hits the support level and bounces off it to sell. OK, you've told the system what to do. It's going to do exactly what you want when it happens. It doesn't happen. It doesn't execute your trade. So a stop is an instruction to trade at a less favorable level than the current price. Now we have to kind of remember every trade, when you open a trade, you have to, you actually are initiating an opposite trade to close your position. So a stop loss or stop is an instruction and it's usually the reverse of where you are. It's to get you out of the market, not to close your position at a profit, it's to stop you from losing. So when the market moves adversely, you basically, with the stop loss, instructed the computer to exercise the opposite trade at a level so you're closing out your trade. A limit is an instruction to trade at a more favorable level than the current price. So a limit order is telling the computer, okay, I want to trade Bitcoin to go up, okay, but I only want to enter Bitcoin at 13200 when Bitcoin's trading at 13700 and the computer will wait until Bitcoin dips down. And the minute it dips, the minute it hits, it will execute your trade. So, for example, let's say the FTSE 100 is trading at 6,000. And you leave an order to sell at 58.90. Now, this is a stop as selling at 58.90 is worse than, or less favorable than the current position. because So, just think of a stop as a what? as a sell order because you're trading in a less favorable condition. Okay. So when the, when the foot when the when the market falls to 5890 it will execute your trade. On the other hand if the FTSE is is trading at 6000 and you leave an order to sell at 6110 this is a limit order and it, at selling at 6110 is, is better than the current market price. So in other words, if you're looking for the market to fall below where it is, it's a stop. If you're looking for the market to climb above where it is, it's a limit. And you can do this for shorts or for long positions. So, so these are orders to buy or sell Immediate. So we start out with the most simple. Let's start with the bare basic order. This is a market order. And this is when you go to the trading tab. And let's pop it up. And you see where it says trade. Let me pop up the ETX platform. See on the ticket right here, it says trade or order. When you have trade clicked on, that is a market order. It's going to make that trade. It's going to execute that trade immediately. If you click on order, 
it's going to open up a different type of frame that's going to give you lots of things to set and the type of order you want. So you have a choice of a stop or a limit order. Then you have, we'll talk about these in detail, until and an OCO order. So you find if you stay a trade, it's just going to make and execute that trade for you immediately. If you want to set up a trade to trade at a specific price or at a specific time or date, you would do that under order. So one is ordering. You're making orders and you're setting something up to happen at a later time. Could be later time, could be a minute from now, but it's at a later time. It's not at the current market price. So remember, the current market price is a market order and that's an immediate trade. It will execute your trade as soon as you click on it and buy or sell whatever you've instructed the system. That is, again, the basics. Okay. Very rarely should you ever use a market order. So at, when an order is carried out, it becomes a filled order, one that is either closed, closing and is either closed an existing position or open a new position. Because remember, to close an existing position, you have to do an other side of a sell. So if you haven't set up a trade with a take profit and a stop loss point and is still trading, you can click on close now, which makes it easy on the screen, or you could open up the opposite trade in that direction and it will close your position. Your market order will be carried out straight away as long as the market is liquid enough. There are willing buyers and sellers for liquid. You would use this type of order if you're happy to trade at the current market price. Now, entry orders can automatically open a trade when you want the when the market hits a certain level. You would use this type of order if you're hoping for a particular price and don't want to monitor the market closely. Now, that's one excuse. The other is that you can't react as fast as the computer. So if you know you want to buy the euro at 121.42, you put in 121.42 because when you see it pop up on your screen, you're not going to be able to execute it as fast. So you're going to tell them because that's the price you want to order. You want to enter the market. Maybe it's the price right, right above a resistance level. OK, or right below a support level or it's when it breaks a trend line. You know what that number is and you want to enter exit. You want to execute an order at that price. But why would you want to trade on the random market price? Like I said, buy, buy a car sticker price. You might as well ask for something or say, fine. The guy says this car is 17,000 pounds. You say to him, OK, I'll buy that car, but I'm only willing to pay 16,900 pounds. OK, well. You don't know whether he's going to do it or not, but you're willing to buy to 16.9. You tell it in the system. When he's willing to come to 16.9, he's got a deal. In this case, you're willing to buy at 16.9, and you've told the computer to execute your trade. These are sometimes called orders to open. Now, these orders automatically close your existing. Okay, then we have closing orders. Closing orders. These are orders that automatically close your existing trade when the market hits a certain price. You can use them to lock in profit if the price moves in your favor or cap your losses if the price moves against you. So we call these take profit and stop losses. And these are sometimes called orders to close. So we can see, let's go back to the ticket again. So we can see this down below that we would if we were trading right off the bat, or we were going to put an order trade, in both cases, we see stop and limit. This allows us to tell the computer, we're instructing the computer when to close our trade. At a stop loss, if the market moves against you, you want it to trade close out your position before you lose any more money. Okay. And at a limit order, you want it to take your profit because say, for instance, you're, you're dealing with the euro again and the euro, you know, you've entered the euro at 121.52 and, you know, you think the euro is going to go up to 121.60, 121.80, 120, but you're willing to take any profit you can get if it bounces up to 122.25. So you put in whatever number you want. And if it happens to be that some, 
you know, 10 seconds gets pushed up to that you know, high, it's going to close out your position and lock in that profit. So anybody who doesn't put a limit or a take profit level is kind of crazy because you never know what's going to send that market. Set it much higher than you expected if you want. And you should never, ever trade with that out of stop loss because you should always be protected. Because no one ever knows what's going to happen. Okay. And based, no matter whether you're doing a market order or any type of involved order, you're always going to have these two choices, the stop loss and the take profit points. Okay. Now, let's talk about what these other types of choices are that you have. Okay. Now, entry and closing orders remain working unless your conditions are met, at which point they will become filled orders. You'll need to decide if you want your order to remain valid indefinitely or to be canceled after a certain amount of time. Now, in most cases when we have a trade open and we've got a stop loss and a take profit, okay, it's executed, we're just, just going to leave them in place. But for instance, say for instance we're willing to buy Bitcoin and only, or as say the euro, but we only want to buy the euro below 121.50. But we don't care whether it's an hour from now, two hours from now, tomorrow, or we only want it executed today if it's at 121.50. If it doesn't reach that point today, we, we want that whole thing closed down. We don't want it executed tomorrow morning or in the middle of the night in the China session, okay, or the Asian session. We only want it. So these are called good to open, good to close. I mean, good to cancel, good to, um, they're good to cancel. And you can set a time and a date or good to the end of the month, good to the end of the day. Okay. So we have good for the day. We have good till date and time. So let's go back and look at this on a ticket because it's very, very important because if you set this up and whatever you put in is the time frame that this will allow. So if you put good to the end of the day, you know, the end of the close of the day, it's going to be over. If you put good till date and time and you can put this date out to the end of next to the end of the year. So if you're saying anytime Bitcoin, it's ten thousand dollars. Buy me a Bitcoin because that means every time it would fall and come down to $10,000, it would execute that trade for you. So if it doesn't reach $10,000 today, doesn't do it tomorrow, but does it in February, it's going to execute that trade. So you have to remember you have it open. But this is one where you said, I'll buy Bitcoin whenever it's $10,000. It's, it's really cheap. So you have good to date and time, and then you have good to the end of the day. So let's go back to the ticket and look at that again. Let me go back. So when we come down here to the ticket and and we click on good till, we click on the box until, right here. We can then leave to the end of the day. That means the end of the trading day, it will close out your position. Or we can select date and time. And we can select any date and time we want to put in here. And it will keep that trade in its system till that date and time. And now it's only going to execute it once. But it will execute that trade whenever that price level that you have set up here at this price level and for the amount of the trade and it will execute it whenever that is reached in that time period so you can go out if you think anytime gold you can just say anytime gold hits one thousand dollars execute buy me a, a contract of gold and it will execute it whenever gold hits a thousand you can pre-set up your stop loss and your take profit point so you're completely protected and anytime you have that fluke in the market so sometimes it's a good thing to have but remember you have to have the margin in your account to cover that trade when it's executed and then the last we can come to is my favorite and that's oco one cancels the other okay 
And remember that that is a this is a great way to trade. It's almost like a trading strategy. In fact, it is. And I use it very, very often using support and resistance, especially when we have a volatile market and when we have uh, news events, economic events coming up. You know, a lot of people say, how do I trade the non farms payroll report? I don't know if it's going to be a good number or not. And it's going to have all this kind of volatility. Well, you can instruct the computer that if it gets above a certain number, buy. If it falls below a certain number, sell. And it will execute whichever one comes and then counts and it won't do the other. So if it's a good number and it sends the market soaring, the euro soaring or the dollar soaring, you it opens up the trade in the direction you, you know going up. If it's a bad number and it's coming down and it falls down below what number you set, it's going to execute that sell order for you. And it will cancel out the buy order. So there are basics now. Let's look at the more complicated that, you, that should be part of your trading strategy. Okay. So a limit is an instruction to trade if the price of the market reaches a particular level that is more favorable than the current price. The limit order level is the maximum at which you are willing to buy or the minimum at which you are willing to sell. You can use a limit order either to open a new position or to terminate an active position. The main benefit of using a limit order is to save you time and effort. You may not always be around to monitor fluctuations in the market and act immediately, so you can use a limit to deal automatically for you. Limits will also be filled at your chosen price, and sometimes at a slightly better price if one is available at the moment your order is filled. Now, limit entry orders. This is an order to open a position by buying when the market hits a low level or lower level than the current price or selling short when the market hits a higher level than the current price. This is suitable if you think the market price will change direction when it hits a certain level. For example, if you use your charts as a tool to help your trading, your analysis might suggest buying a share or index or commodity if the price drops below a level that's been identified as significant. Take a look at the example that we show here. Okay. The pound is currently trading at 160.50. Now that was before Brexit, but it doesn't make a difference for our example. Chart analysis shows that 160.70 is a key resistance level. If the market reaches this level, it's likely to then decline. You decide to sell the euro, the, uh, the pound US dollar if it reaches 160.70. So you place a limit order to open at this level. Two hours later, the market does indeed hit 160.70. Your broker automatically carries out your sell order and opens your trade. If the pound falls as you expected, you make the profit and it continues to rise. You'll also suffer the loss. All it is is executing your trade at the specific price. So now, and we're going to have to go this through this pretty quickly here, is stop orders. And there's different types of stop orders, but no trade should ever be executed without a stop loss order. A stop is an instruction to trade when the price of a market reaches a particular level that is less favorable than the current position. So this means buying if the market hits a specified higher level or selling if the market fits a level. Like limits, stops save you time and effort by reducing your need to monitor the markets. You can use them, one, to either open a new position, like we talked earlier, stop orders, okay, or to terminate the active position. So stop loss orders are used to terminate a position at a less favorable market. So, for instance, you want 100 shares of the of XXX that you bought at the price of $37. Some disappointing half-year results caused the share price to decline. While you hope that price won't keep falling, if it does, you don't want to risk losing too much. As such, you place a stop, place an order to sell the stock if the price drops below $32. The price continues to decline and passes you to $32, where your stop loss is carried out. You've lost $500, in other words, 100 shares times $5 each on your shares. But if the price kept falling, you would have lost substantially more. 
Stop losses are usually provide free of charge and they are at ETX. However, this is type of a stop loss is not guaranteed. Your trade could be closed at a worse level than one is specified if the market reacts very quickly and that's called slippage. There's nothing we can do to help you with that. If the markets are cascading, like we saw with the Swiss franc you know, two years ago, it will close you out as soon as possible at the best price possible. And it will execute it, but it, you know, there's no guarantee that if you set 160, 70, and there's a huge market volatility, and there's all kinds of craziness and liquidity dries up, the computer will close it out because remember, it has to actually execute the opposite. Okay. Now, there are some places that will give you a guaranteed stop loss. Okay, if you are spread betting or trading CFDs, you can put an absolute cap on your risk by attaching a guaranteed stop to your position. This ensures your stop will take effect at the exact level you have chosen. There will be no slippage, even if the price changes suddenly and you'll be protected against gapping. So again, OCOs, oh, one cancels the other. Is a pair of orders stipulating that if one order is executed, then the other order is automatically canceled. So let's assume an investor owns 1,000 shares of a volatile stock that is trading at $10. The investor expects the stock to trade in a wide range in a near term and has a target of $13 on it. For risk mitigation, he would like to lose no more than $2 on the stock. The investor can therefore place an OCO order, which would consist of a stop loss order to sell at 1,000 shares at $8 and simultaneously a limit order to sell 1,000 shares at 13, whichever occurs first. These orders could either be day orders or good to cancel orders. If the stock trades up to $13, the limit order would, to sell would be executed and the investors holding 1,000 shares would be sold at $13. Concurrently, the $8 stop loss will be automatically canceled by the trade. If this order is not canceled and the stock is just down to $8, the investor may needlessly find himself in a short position. And there are many ways to properly use an OCO. These are great if you're trading, like I mentioned before, before or after an event. It's a great trading if you're using, if you're a um, support and resistance trader, especially in a market that is in consolidation. You can get lots of trades in as the market bounces off of a support level and bounces off of a resistance level in between or when you're not sure where it's going to go or you think an asset is going to move up but you want some confirmation so you'll only want to trade that asset when it's above its resistance level but always remember risk using leverage order types and stop losses are crucial to every trader and to every trade make sure you understand these concepts before you push the button Determine how you will enter a trade. Now, what I do is I write everything down. I got little notepads all over everything. I decide my stop loss. I decide my take profit. Now, we also have what's called a tra trailing stop loss, which I didn't show you, which is a stop loss based on movement, and it will keep following that asset up. And there, there are many ways and strategies you can use this because you can change your stop loss and take profit points during a trade. So what I do is, as I see a trade moving in my favor and getting higher and higher, if it's where, where a long position, I will keep moving my stop loss closer and closer. Because that means, say I, I bought Bitcoin at $10,000 and Bitcoin moved to $10,200, I'll move my stop loss to wherever, you know, say $10,100. And that means even if it falls down against me and falls down below $10,000, it closed me out. At ten thousand one hundred, so I made a hundred dollars profit on that, you know, on that trade anyway. So you can constantly lock in your profit as it moves up, and use this with a trailing stop loss you set at points, or manually change your stop losses. You can constantly change your stop losses and your your um, take profit points. So keep that in mind before you push a button. Understand exactly how you're executing a trade. Okay. Stay away from market orders. Learn to use limit orders. Learn and make sure you always put stop losses and take put take profit points. You don't have to, but find an absurd number. Find a number much way above or a good trader says, 
I'm entering a trade. This is where my risk is going to be. This is what my profit will be. And you're just happy to take your profit at the level you thought it was going to go. Either way, you can continue doing this. But all of this should be part of your trading strategy. And as you can see, limiting your risk at all times and being protected is important. But you can also combine it into strategies. You can have lots of, like I said, you can have lots of good to cancel orders in there. You can have lots of future orders. You can say, today, you know, I think gold's going to fall down below 1,000. I'm going to set up a, a, you know, a limit order. If gold falls below 1,000, I'm going to tell it to buy me a couple shares, a couple, you know, contracts. Okay. So remember that. Keep it in mind and learn how to use these tools to make your trading more successful and to keep your loss limited. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great week. Thank you for being part of ETX. And remember, we've changed. We got lots of new classes for you. Look at the schedule. We changed our schedules. We've added new classes. So we have lots of things coming up. You can find it right on the ETX Education under the platform. And enroll in all the classes. Come to us every night. And thank you very much for being part of ETX. Now we do have this week a uh, a full class on mastering the new etx pro where they'll go we'll go step by step show you how to set up your charts how to set up your trading how to set up your templates how to set up everything on the platform so thank you very much have a great day and we'll talk to you again real soon good night now and best of everything in the new year